Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we prepare for this new episode by remaking the last one. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I'm joined, as I'm always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. Um, Our episode has absolutely nothing to do with this. Okay. But I just want to acknowledge that when we're recording this on uh, July 31st, it's the 35th anniversary of the Game Boy being released in North America. Wow. That, yeah. is, that is incredible. 35 years of Game Boy. 35 years of Game Boy. 35 years of Tetris. 35 years of Super Mario Land. 35 years of baseball. <laughs> Super five years. Super five? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Super five. Super five years <laughs> of... Uh, alleyway. Alleyway, that's what I was right. searching for, yeah. And is tennis the other one? Ugh. I think I'm it's not tennis. sure. I think it's tennis is the other... Uh, uh, well, congratulations to all of them. Congratulations to all of them. Also, Mark, uh, as we are recording this, uh, July 31st, this is the last day of a month uh, before the month that <laughs> the new Famicom Detective Club game comes out. That's right. I mean, I'm sure everybody... Does that make sense? <laughs> it, it, may, it makes complete sense to me. Yeah. And I'm sure that everybody, because by the time we list you, this episode yes. is released, it will actually be August and will be in the month of, of Mio, Mio, the, the smiling, smiling man. man. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody threw off their covers this morning and leapt out of bed. Right. And if they tore off their uh, normal boring pajamas, <laughs> put on Mio, the smiling man pajamas, complete yes. with a uh, sack for, for over your head. Uh-huh. Uh, and Just a good day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Uh, very excited uh, about uh, about a new Famicom Detective Club. Um, uh, quick, uh, w- did we... Did we do an ABCs of, of uh, Game Boy um, earlier this year or some sort of Game Boy episode? I know we talked about doing it around the time of the 35th anniversary, and now I don't remember if we did it or I not. I don't think... I don't think we did. I don't think we've... Yeah, I don't think we did. Um, we definitely didn't do an, a- an ABCs of Game Boy. Right, because we just did ABCs of the NES. And of the Nintendo DS. Right. Not that long ago? Well, or at the beginning of the year, it's I think. It's really... It's tough to remember these things. It's tough to remember. Uh, also, it is still hot NES summer. That's right. Even though it is also Emmy of the Smiling Man, uh, August, and the Year of Ladies. Uh-huh. Okay. We're, we're having it all. We can have it all. Yeah, we're like Liz Lemon. Um, and if you want to support Liz Lemon, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, where if you are supporting us at the 8 or 16-bit levels, you get access to our once-a-month episodes of miniseries. Uh, that we are putting out, we are making our way through NCS Arcade Season 2. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Patrick and I are continuing to play games that we've never beaten before. Uh-huh. Um, and should we go ahead and say what we're going to be playing for August? No, 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 no. Wait for... No, not yet. Next oh, okay. Week. Next okay, week. okay. Right. Um, because we still need your help. Uh, oh, yeah. We talked about Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge on Game Boy and Mega Man 5 on Game Boy. Um, but we will be recording a sort of follow-up episode to that, uh, incorporating your comments, your questions, your emails um, about the Mega Man series in general, Mega Man Game Boy series specifically. Um, so just email us, Nintendo Cartridge Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com, and we will incorporate those into the episode that episode will be free for anyone who follows us on patreon at any level including the free level so uh if you are not supporting us at 8 or 16 that shouldn't stop you from uh emailing us your thoughts about uh mega man on game boy or just mega man in general um and uh those emails we need by sunday mark what is the date of this sunday it's like the fifth uh oh man really put on sunday the fourth (laughs) um uh, Sunday, August yeah, 4th. Yeah, Sunday, August 4th. There we go. Uh, by the end of the day, uh, send those emails to us and we'll be uh, recording the next day. I I feel very complimented that you thought I would know. Uh, why, 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 wouldn't, why wouldn't you know? Um, because I don't normally know. You know, I'm not normally keeping track of... Um, I hope this is not like ruining something for you, but I'm not normally... I think you are. I think you're normally <laughs> keeping track. I think you normally know what, what dates are, are, are coming up. Um, uh, and then also, if you are uh, a four-bit 
supporter you get access to ncs detective club uh you can listen to all six of those episodes now um did, did I, I feel like we were approaching that business from different angles. Did we hit all parts of it? I think we hit all parts of it. Okay, great. Um, if you are not in the Discord, email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com, and we will send you an invitation. Uh, and then, of course, check out my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles source book. Uh, the first three issues are in comic book stores now. Issue four comes out on September 4th. Mark, we've got an interesting angle of what Nintendo is up to to discuss today. So let's dig into our main topic. The whole episode today, we're going to be discussing this email that we got from Chariot Goblin. Chariot Goblin, thank you so much for writing in. Thank you for writing in. And I don't think we say it enough because you've written in the past. Yes. Great name. Great name. We love the name. Uh, I'm not sure I understand it. Is he a goblin who rides a chariot? Or is it like a goblin that pulls a chariot? I am not sure. Is it possible that it's a reference to Shimigami Tensei? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have reason to believe that it is? Aren't, aren't there like chariot demons that look like part of the male anatomy? Oh, I'm I... not necessarily saying that this is what they're referring to, but sure. I feel like there are like... But you I are saying don't look it up. <laughs> I am saying yeah. chariot goblin. Let us know if yes. you want to. Let, or, yeah, you don't have to. We like the name regardless. Um, Chariot Goblin says, hey, NCS crew, the announcement of MEO got me thinking about a strategy Nintendo has been doing in the last 10 years. Remaking a game and then releasing a new installment in that same franchise slash style three to five years later. Examples. And we've talked about some of these examples. Uh, 2017, Metroid Samus Returns to 2021, Metroid Dread. 2019, Link's Awakening, to 2024, Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, 2021, the Famicom Detective Club remakes, to 2024, Emio the Smiling Man, Famicom, Famicom Detective Club. Do you think this theory holds up? What other franchises or styles of game would you like to see get revived through a remake, followed by a new installment? Thanks. So, uh, first thing I think is uh, we should just go over those uh three specific examples because it's kind of more than just uh the same or i i guess it's it's kind of an open question in some of these um whether it is uh just the same style and same like series or whether there is more that connects these games um like in the very obvious example of uh metroid samus returns to metroid dread both being developed by mercury steam right and i think in all three cases, I guess we don't know for sure who developed the new Famicom Detective Club game. We don't know yet. But right. I think everybody's operating under the assumption that it's mages. I am I am also assuming that it's mages. I mean, interestingly, we haven't seen any of that gameplay yet, right? I We've g- seen some art assets, but Yeah, I guess that's true. Um and then also for Link's Awakening, yeah. that was remade by Grezzo in 2019. And everybody's assuming that they are also the developer behind Echoes of Wisdom. But yeah, we we don't know at this point. We won't know until the games are actually released right. who is developing them. Uh, and it's so, like, a- as we sort of explore this concept a little bit more, like, generally here, um, it is interesting how many development partners Nintendo has and how many, um, like, directors that they work with uh, internally and externally um, that are... Uh, all, that are remaking games like all the time, right? Like in, in my research for this, it was just like, oh yeah, they have like a whole team basically or whole sets of teams that are like just remaking games. Yeah, here's a question for you. Yeah. Has there been in 2024 a Nintendo published game that was internally developed, like programmed what by a, Nintendo? Great question. I mean, uh, do we know who made uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong? Oh, that's uh, or is that is that Akira? Did they make it? No, or Arika? Oh, no, yes, Arika, that yeah. was um, that was Loom, uh, Endless Ocean. Maybe mm. you're right. Maybe that, or I guess like there was no. Sorry, I think that Mario versus Donkey Kong the remake might have been developed by um the North American development studio that is not retro, sure. like NCL or something like that. I'm I'm uh blanking nst maybe i don't know i'm blanking on the name um 
but there there hasn't been i don't think that this year there's been like a based in japan like a uh yeah, it's sorry. It is Nintendo software technology that that did uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong and the, I, the remake. And I think they're based in Washington. So That's I don't correct. think I don't yes. think there's like a Japanese developed like Nintendo LTD internally created game yeah. that has been because um, Thousand Year Door was intelligence systems. intelligent systems, right? Um, the uh, Princess Peach Showtime was uh, good, good feel. feel. Another code was some other company. Was that company that makes the <laughs> other code games? Yeah. Well, no, because they're out of business. Oh, yeah, but that's it was right. like that's it was right. a, uh, yeah, I'm, another again, company. I'm blanking right. on the name. But yeah, I I think so. It makes me think that uh, it would it makes it follows then that Echoes of Wisdom would be by Grezzo, and this new uh, Favorite Comic Detective Club game would be by Mages, right? Because and because Nintendo is keeping their powder dry. I mean, also worth noting that last year. Last year, Nintendo Nintendo proper put out a Mario game, a Zelda game, and a Pikmin game. Like they were so. Oh, here here we go. What about um uh, uh Nintendo World Championships, NES I, edition? I yeah, that's I don't know who the developer. It was the, whoever developed the um NES remix games, and that was not Nintendo internally. Uh, all right. Well, then uh, there 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 we go. Uh, that it is. Um, yeah, that Nintendo themselves are not, uh, actually making a lot of games that are, uh, that are, that are coming out right now. Uh, sorry, I'm also trying to look this up while, while talking. So Wikipedia says that NES Remix was developed by Nintendo EAD Tokyo. So it's possible that I'm wrong that, uh, Nintendo World Championships was developed by the same team as NES Remix, or it's also possible that any, uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible I'm wrong, or it's possible that Nintendo World Championships was um, developed by somebody else. But I feel like I was reading that uh, neither of them were developed. Indies Zero. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm also reading Indies Zero in here. Well, I mean, whatever the case, uh, it, it does seem, even if that is an example of Nintendo making a game, uh, and Brothership, right? We, we believe that one is probably from uh nintendo I don't proper th- i don't think so because they were saying that um they weren't they did not say who was developing it but they mm. did say that people who worked on it previously were right but were involved the, but i but guess the it's company that previously made them doesn't exist anymore right so it's possible i guess it's possible yeah. that it is nintendo but it seems like it's another development company that uh hired people who worked at alpha right. dream but all of which is to say probably we're going to see all of this next year right right when, when a, a new switch launches um so th- three great examples uh from chariot goblin the uh metroid samus returns to dread a zelda links awakening to echoes of wisdom and the famicom detective club thing uh th- those are all like great examples that seem like yeah within about uh three to five years um a remake of a game followed by from a partner of nintendo um, to a brand new entry in the series from a partner of Nintendo. Another code recollection was by Arc System Works. Great. Um, yeah, and it really does seem like, you know, these remakes are training grounds totally. for uh, the next installment. It's like, yeah, we train you with the remake of Samus Returns, with the remake of Link's Awakening. And then, although Grezzo, you know, has been doing Zelda remakes for a while a while yeah Yeah. um because they were also responsible for the 3ds remakes of majora's mask and ocarina of time but yeah and then you know you graduate kind of to 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 make your own your own right um and again all presumably we don't we don't actually know if grezzo and also like i don't know i feel like the uh the whole like nintendo thing with their development partners is so like kind of loosey-goosey or like they can have a new partner that like they still send a director over who is like works at nintendo proper and it's like that director is responsible for carrying over the same like legacy or uh, quality or whatever um just a very interesting company yeah totally unknown you know on like um although it seemed like mercury steam had a little more in the way that they've talked about it like obviously nintendo was involved but had a little bit more freedom but like for something like famicom detective club or Link's awakening especially a new one like echoes of wisdom You'd have to imagine that Nintendo is fairly heavily involved, yeah, and well, then maybe these yes. third parties are acting as um, programmers versus, you know, like whole like 
But I think they're also like d- designers and like, uh, you know, uh, d- yeah, I guess designers is, is, is what I mean, both in the like visual sense, but in like the game design sense. It's just that like, uh, you know, when it comes time to actually selling these games, uh, they're going to put Sakamoto out there to sell Metroid, and they're going to sell uh, put uh, A.G. Numa out there to sell um, Zelda. And they're going to put Sakamoto out there to sell Famicom Detective Club. Right, but that one, I believe, is actually uh, pouring forth from his veins directly, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, but yes, so all, all of which is to say that, like, uh, we will never know the inner workings yeah, of Nintendo, totally. d- despite, uh, you know, what we uh, try to divine from, from various tea leaves. Um, but so uh, we wanted to see if there were other examples of this sort of practice um, that uh, Chariot Goblin did not mention. Um, and like, I, I think we both came up with a couple examples, uh, maybe some that are like a little bit softer. I've got one in reverse. Um but uh, let's let's just go through some of these. Yeah, I so I think we approached this a little bit differently. Okay, great. Because I'm interested to see which ones you've pulled out. The ones I have are like in this next section are Nintendo has done a remake. Ah, okay. But there is no There's like no, uh, there, there no hasn't there yet. is yet to be a second part. That's great. So let me do my list first because I, I I I thought we had maybe three sections. It sounds like we have four sections of this conversation. Look at us go. Look at us go. We're so good. Um. So the other things that I wanted to shout out were um Fire Emblem: The Shadow Dragon uh, on DS, a, a remake of the original um Fire Emblem on Famicom, and Fire Emblem: New Mystery of the Emblem, which was a Japan only uh release and was a remake of the Super Famicom game. Um, that those two both lead to uh, Fire Emblem Awakening on 3DS, um, and that being uh, like the journey of the dual screen uh, 3D um, Fire Emblem game, and Awakening uh, is this like enormous uh, explosion of like what Fire Emblem could be going into the future. Um, that always seemed like a a pretty neat uh, stacking up of like here are these two legacy things that we do sequels to bam, here's the the new, bold new direction for the series that is still something that yeah, Fire Emblem totally. is responding to now. Um, this one's a little bit more sideways, uh, but The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds um, started life as a Link to the Past remake uh, on, on 3DS. And then they were like, oh, you know what? This is actually a different game. Um, and then Triforce Heroes uh, uses that same exact art style, is a different style of game, but is like, I don't know. It 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 feels to me like a sort of spiritual sequel to uh, Link Between Worlds, at least in terms of like assets and development teams. And it's stuff. funny that that's happened. I never thought about it until now, but that that's happened multiple times. Yes. in Zelda development, where a game starts out as mm-hmm. a remake of another game, but on this new system, right? And then it turns into its own thing. Like the same thing and, happened with and Link's, it's Link to and the and Past. Link to the Past. You're right, because yeah. both Link's Awakening on uh, the Game Boy, yep. and A Link Between Worlds. That's funny. Both started out as remakes of uh, A Link to the Past, which makes me wonder. Well, and like uh, the Link to the Past and Four Swords Adventure on uh, GBA, like they did sort of remake it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. They're, yeah, they're they're like uh, they keep trying to remake it, and sometimes, usually, it results in at least an additional like sub game. Uh-huh. Sometimes a whole completely different game. Yeah, very funny. Uh, and then the the one that I I was like, this is sort of a, a reverse example. Um, is the uh, Metroid Fusion to Metroid Zero Mission that they started by making a oh, sequel, right? And then uh, the same team in, internal at Nintendo. Um, remade uh, Metroid One as Metroid Zero Mission. Um, you already mentioned the uh, the Grezzo 3DS Zelda games, uh, but I just wanted to uh, bemoan the fact that they never got a chance to make a 3D Zelda game in the style of the uh, Nintendo 64 games. I just feel like they would have killed it. Yeah, and there were so many. Uh, it was probably just like fan wishing. Yeah, but totally. You know that that they actually were able to do it. Presumably, after a link to the past, right? Is or sorry, uh, um, uh, a Link's Awakening yep. remake is is pretty cool. Yeah, but I, yes, what would I have still been would have preferred that it was a three D yeah. one, especially since it was like that, like Nintendo sixty four, yeah, era, like to have that turn into a trilogy in a way would have been so cool. You know, one thing that I I think those are great examples from Nintendo's past. One thing that I think is so interesting about those compared to the more recent examples. I think it just shows like where 
the Nintendo, you know, even though they keep growing their uh, developer headcount, they are still so like resource constrained in a way. Yeah. And so they've, instead of being able to have these initiatives internally, like they have in the past, um, like those examples that you gave, they're now looking to partners that they can like right. mentor and be like with Mercury Steam. It's like, yeah, like we will teach you the Nintendo way. And if you are right. up to muster, then we, then we trust you to work on a new installment of yeah, this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, uh... Yeah, it's it, it's cool stuff, and like you know, you can see them like sort of dabbling with that elsewhere, um, or like earlier, um, you know, uh, in just in in Zelda games that like Capcom made three Zelda games, right? Or even like even like going back to Link's Awakening, how it was you know kind of like a small yeah B team almost within Nintendo that uh, were just working on this project at night for fun, mm-hmm. you know, and then it became its own kind of like its own thing. Uh, the last two things I wanted to shout out here is examples. Uh, what one more a- actual example of this kind of thing uh, that is a little bit more under the radar. Um, so Donkey Kong Country Returns uh, on the uh, w- it, the remake on 3DS was uh, handled by a company called Monster Games. Uh, Monster Games uh, assisted in the development of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, uh, well, along with uh, Retro uh, Studios, they like provided additional support. Um, so kind of cool. You get to like make the 3DS version of the first game. Uh, and so that's that remake to working on the sequel, even if they're not like people know it as a retro game. But, right. Um, monster games, uh, help that. And then I just, uh, another, like kind of a shame this never happened. Um, but I kind of get it, um, that, uh, and also is this really a, a remake kind of Star Fox Zero, um, was developed by Platinum Games, um, with Miyamoto at the helm. Um, and, uh, that they, that, that is sort of a remake of the, uh, Star Fox 64 with like a crazy, uh, control scheme. And it would have been nice if they could have made their own. If that game wasn't a disaster, I feel like we could live in an alternate, uh, reality where Platinum. They really tried. Did get to make one. Yeah. Yeah. Man, they, I, uh, we were talking about kind of like, we'll never know the, relationship that nintendo has and like the actual inner workings and who's working on what yeah and i think the monster games working on the donkey kong country returns for the 3ds is a great example yeah same with like you know uh um i mean we do know some about some of these but like bandai namco being developers Mm -hmm. on uh super smash brothers ultimate and right smash 4 and Monolith Soft working on Breath of the Wild and probably Tears of the Kingdom. Yep. Like, and I think Retro at some point did like assets for Mario Kart Seven. Like, yes. it, the inner workings of Nintendo, I think, are much more complex than just saying like this studio did this game. Right. Yeah. It is much more interesting than them like owning a bunch of studios that they are somehow able to manage all these other independent entities to like build their games in conjunction with each other and with them is pretty cool but so uh mark you you now have a list of we've gotten remakes now where is the yes okay that's right and so uh okay so here's one that um i wonder if in an alternate reality this could have turned into something but advance wars one plus two reboot camp yeah a a remake of a a cursed product (laughs) truly yeah a cursed product uh handled by way forward and you know, a um, a franchise that had gone dormant. Because I do kind of, I guess, like, not all of our recent examples are franchises that have gone dormant. Clearly, the Zelda series right. is not dormant. But, like, Metroid. Metroid basically was. Famicom yeah. Detective Club. Like, if both, yes. if, like, both of those games had commercially and or critically bombed, the likelihood that we had new entries when we did from these same companies Right, probably wouldn't have um, wouldn't have happened. But yeah, Advance Wars. And kind of a surprise every day that Famicom Detective Club didn't bomb when the remakes came out. In yeah, and, and totally like a relative success right, 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 for right. sure. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, Advance Wars One Plus Two Reboot Camp. Um. An example of them taking kind of a dormant franchise, giving it another shot. Uh. Cursed by world events, mm-hmm. and um. I feel like when it finally did release, that it got good reviews. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I think it 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 got the reviews that like a a faithful remake of Advance Wars Advance Wars One and Two should get right. That like 
a compelling strategy game, uh, slightly marred by the it, the fact that it's twenty years old, right? And like has the difficulty curve that comes with that. Um, and uh, just like the speed at which it moves is the speed of a game that old. Um, uh, so like good, not great. But if it had, you know, a, came out when it was originally supposed to, yeah, which was because it got delayed. Before it got yes. like delayed, because yeah. originally it was going to come out the holiday of 2021. One? I think that's right. And yeah. then got delayed into 2022. Um, and so who knows, right? Like right. who knows what would have happened with that game? I mean, if, if they could have launched this thing in like, you know, September of uh, 2020 or something, like I think it, it could have found like a real audience, uh, like hungering for more things to play on their switch um uh and not just you know replaying old um 3d mario games and maybe and so maybe we would have we would be in a reality where we see a new advance wars yeah. coming out around this time yeah uh a, a more recent example from this year that we talked about earlier another another code yeah um yet another code <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh the collection came out in january for um that, I mean, this is something that could still be coming, right? Like it, it could be. Yeah. I don't think we have. I have no sense of how they sold, other than I'd guess bad. Yeah. Like yeah. definitely, or I don't think a billion seller. I don't right. think it's on like in Nintendo's earnings ever. Maybe cumulatively, it'll inch across that, but it never in a single quarter has um, sold a million units. Not a big surprise, but it's another one of those like Famicom Detective Clubs or maybe Advance Wars where. The budget couldn't have been that big, so right. did it do enough to um, warrant a new entry? Okay, I'm on uh, VG Carts charts. Sorry, uh, to try and find sales numbers for uh, another code recollection. Uh, they have no information. <laughs> okay, let me. Um, yeah, and I'm looking at a list of um, known sales on Nintendo first party games from. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's been mentioned I don't at all. I think it's been recorded. Yeah, yeah. So um, not a great sign. Not not a great sign. And Nintendo has had like a qu- a quarterly report since this game came out. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong already mentioned it. Yeah, um, would be another uh like perfect one to uh you know in three years see a, a new entry in the franchise uh from that same developer. You do wonder what the uh bar for success at nintendo is right for some of these because again you know famicom detective club got a new entry but at the same time the expectations for a mario versus donkey kong game any game with mario in the title have to be higher than famicom detective club right this one is sold over a million units which that's a lot but is it enough for nintendo nowadays to you know like invest in a sequel right 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 well and you know you just had to compare it to like what else comes out this year and like I mean, I don't know. I, I so so far, I, probably the only game they put out that sold more is uh, Princess Peach, right? Right, yeah. and and it hasn't sold that much more. So again, looking at the list that I have, Princess Peach Showtime, um, one million two hundred twenty thousand. Okay, and Mario versus Donkey Kong, one million one hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, um, and then the last one I have. Do you? Sorry, just yeah. to, to do you think that there uh, is going to be like of of what we know uh coming out in uh the Nintendo lineup this year. Do we think there's anything that has like the capacity to break like 2 million? Like maybe the do we think Echoes of Wisdom is going to sell that well? I would be I, I think if Echoes of Wisdom doesn't sell that well, it'll be that'll be a that'll huge be a disappointment. disappointment. And what about uh Mario and Luigi Brothership? But uh, that's another one where I think that they, especially yeah. being positioned as it is in like Right. November as kind of like that holiday game. Yeah. I'd be really surprised. Let's see if I can find Link's Awakening on here. I think that is what sold the like remake was. Four million copies or something like that. Yeah. So the numbers I have, and this was of uh Q2 2023, six million six hundred and thirty thousand. Okay. So I would like to me it feels like that's the floor for Echoes of Wisdom to be right. a success, you know. Right. would well, be to match Link's Awakening. And the last Zelda game they put out, which is obviously a different scale in, entirely, um, you know, sold o- over 10 million copies, right? Do you Tears mean Tears of the, Kingdom? the Kingdom? Yeah. Yeah, it's over 20 million. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. That's over 10. <laughs> uh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just mean, uh, I just mean it, it qualifies as mega success, right? Right. Yeah. 
Um, more? I just have one more, and this is one that I don't know if it really counts, but the Donkey Kong something, right? We've, yes. we've had rumors of a Donkey Kong game. There's Donkey Kong Country HD, but I think this breaks the pattern that we're talking about of a remake. Mm-hmm. Being this feels more like we're keeping the brand alive. Yes, P- priming the pump, like um, like when they did Metro Prime Remastered, like putting this out here to keep Donkey Kong on people's mind for whatever is next for Donkey Kong. Right. Well, and like there is, I, I, look, I'm excited for uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD uh, on Switch because I think that'll be like the best way to play what is a a pretty good game. Um, that like I never want to play that game on Wii with like its uh waggle controls to make you roll or uh like you know do basic moves in the game um and then so it's either that or play it on 3DS and the 3DS the controls are fixed but like it's on a tiny screen you can't do co-op um so like this is going to be an ideal way to play what is a pretty good game I do still find it frustrating that the last five Donkey Kong Country games there's only two of them right like. Re- there's returns returns 3d tropical freeze tropical freeze uh you know with funky mode uh and then um uh, uh returns hd like it's they're just putting out the same two games five times yeah so that's frustrating yeah it it definitely but there has to be a reason right like is in like it, mm. i feel like they're doing it to keep donkey kong a going concern Yes. While whatever it, they're planning whatever they're to do, with, for yeah, whatever yeah. they're planning to do next with him can finally come into focus. Yeah, I agree. But it, it's also it like, is really when, weird. When are we going to get that that new thing? Like, uh, the switch has been out for y- years. We're going on eight years at this point, um, uh, and no new Donkey Kong game. It is kind of crazy that Returns is will be like fifteen years old. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Crazy. So a whole generation of people who, you know, have never played that game before. Because even the 3DS remake came out early in the 3DS's life. Right. Like, it wasn't that old of a game when the 3DS right, right. remake was yes. released. It was probably two or three years old. And now, you know, for it to be coming back. So, uh, I mean, I guess ex- excluding, um, and maybe it's unfair for me to exclude these, uh, but excluding uh, Jungle Beat and uh, Donkey Konga, are GameCube and Switch the only games to not have like a new Donkey Kong Country games? Yes. If we count 64 as right. uh, a country game. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. I think that's right. Just weird is all. The only other thing I want to add about Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is after my experience with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, where I was like, uh-huh. This looks dumb. Mm-hmm. Looks bad. Yep. I'm buying it out of obligation and, and like loving it. Yeah. I'm now uh, like willing to accept that I will like Returns HD much more <laughs> than um, uh, I was initially giving it credit for. Yeah. Or at least uh, leaving yourself open to that possibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's you right. You don't have to commit <laughs> that's now right. to loving it. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, uh, I was talking about this with um, uh, Jeremy on a Video Games Comedy Show that came out this week. Um, but like, yeah, I really, really liked Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Yeah. I thought it was, like, the perfect presentation of that package and, like, totally changed that game's estimation in my eyes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm open to the Switch uh, revitalizing any game for me. Except Thousand Year Door, which I don't know if I'm ever going back to it. <laughs> um all right so do we want to move now into the sort of more fantasy yeah. element of this here where um you know the to chariot goblins question was uh which other franchises or style of game would you like to see get revived through a remake followed by a new installment um i have three different examples here that i i, I want to touch on but uh so uh would you like me to go first or do you want to go first yeah go ahead um so one of these is like a, a remake that has been uh, long rumored for the Switch um, to the point where one of us uh, predicts it uh, anytime we're doing a prediction episode. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, Rusty's right? Rusty's Real Deal <laughs> no, Baseball. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, 
The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Oh. Um, obviously, there was the HD version of it that appeared on the Wii U. Not a lot of people played it because not a lot of people played the Wii U. Um, and it's, uh, you, I, like, we've heard persistent rumors that this thing exists and is just waiting for Nintendo to pull a lever and it appears on the eShop. Um, so I would like that game to come out, that remake, and then let's get a new Toon Link game. Yes, I'm 100% on board. Um, I, it would be really fun to have another game in that universe. Yes. Uh, and, like, the it could either be, you know, along the lines of a smaller experience um, with more, like, touch-based controls, like uh, the uh, F- Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks, but it could also just be another 3D Zelda game in that awesome Toon Link style. Yeah. It kind of doesn't matter. I guess I would prefer the, the latter, but uh, either one would be good. This was not on my list, but I will throw it out here, is Hyrule Warriors, and mm. then uh, something new in that, not not Hyrule Warriors, okay. Triforce Heroes. There we go. Triforce Heroes, and then something new oh, oh, yeah. in like the Triforce Heroes universe. Yeah. I think that would be, would be super that'd fun. That'd be so cool. Especially just like considering what the Switch has done for like online squad-based gaming, right? Like that Splatoon is such a thing um, that to take a game like Triforce Heroes and just put it somewhere where there actually is an audience of people playing games online, right? Um, which was just not the case for 3DS. Uh, yeah, we've said it a lot that uh, Triforce Heroes uh, totally burdened by the platform that it's on. Yeah, and I think a remake could would do a lot to rehabilitate the image of that game. Totally agree. Um, here's my first real one. And yeah. this, this is actually what I thought you were going to say when you were talking about like it's been widely rumored and all that kind of stuff kid icarus uprising yes oh my god yes this is one that uh, Sak- uh not sakamoto um sakurai mm-hmm. you know it ha- himself has said it would be very difficult to right uh, he's like i'm not sure if anyone but my genius <laughs> could wrangle such a project <laughs> Uh, it'd be very difficult to bring this to other platforms other than the 3DS. Kid Icarus Uprising, you know, had a very unique control scheme. Um, we did it's, a whole episode this, about this it. Is the dang 3DS thing again. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a whole episode about it during Kid Icarus Month, uh, maybe in 2020. A few years ago, you should go back and listen to that. It was really fun for me to play it for the first time. But um, yeah, I, I think this is one that, again, you get it off of the 3DS, mm-hmm. um, figure out what the control scheme should yep. be yep. on modern hardware, and then... And remember, this also had, like, a multiplayer component that was, like, pretty robust, but no one was playing it. Right. Uh, so that could be a mode that is, like, totally re- revitalized by being on Switch. This one I do think would be hard because Sakurai, God love him, does not seem like someone who is good at mentoring other people to take no, over when he leaves. No, I would agree. So it's like, I, I think this would be a remake uh, overseen by Sakurai, and then the new one would also have to be uh, overseen hand, by Sakurai. Overseen by yeah. Sakurai yeah. Right. And then he dies in the chair <laughs> making the game. How Okay, if he dies while making a game and the game isn't Smash Brothers, how furious will people be? <laughs> <laughs> but you're right that like, um, uh, not only, uh, is the, the, uh, uprising like ripe to be remade, but it is like absolutely the style of game that, you know, like a, uh, a quick, like action-based, um, bright, colorful, sometimes shooter, sometimes hack and slash game, um, full of character and, uh, charm that like, that's a, that's a Nintendo game. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and a, a game that they... They put out so many like RPGs and stuff like that now, and uh, tactics games, and sort of like slower paced experiences. Like, it, it's a whole, but it's it's the right shape for a Nintendo game. And it's one of those that if they did remake it, what door would that open on? You know, like the Switch. Totally. What door would that open for more Kid Icarus right games in the future? Right. It's always kind of shocking to me that um, Uprising didn't didn't like usher in new like Kid Icarus as a like tent pole for I, Nintendo. Yeah, I wonder how it's sold. Yeah. Um because it is a really unique game. Right. Like it has the on rail portions, like the shooter portions, and then it has like the combat. But the you know the control scheme is weird. It's asking a lot that game it's is true. asking it's a true. lot of people. Yeah. Like it's I agree. it's not immediately approachable. Um 
Yeah, you're right. And like they sold it or it came with like a weird little accessory to like hold up the 3DS so you didn't have to hold it while also trying to use the uh, the stylus at the same time. Um, so like, yeah, it just, you're, you're right. That even though it's a very cool game, it's asking too much of its player base. Or and a, potential player base. Right. And I, I don't just don't know how many people it would like actually appeal right, to. Right. Um, that's a great one. Uh, Mark, I'm going to cast us back to uh, 2020. Just if you can bear with me and please just occupy that mind space for a second. And remember uh, that we were celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary. And as part of Mario's 35th anniversary, they said, we are releasing for a limited time. Uh, a new collection of Mario games called Super Mario 3D All-Stars that includes Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and that's it. Leading some of us to say, where's Super Mario Galaxy 2? These jokers are leaving Super Mario Galaxy 2 (laughs) off this list. So that's what I'm asking for. Yes. A remake of Super Mario Galaxy 2 because it's not part of 3D All-Stars. Why is it not part of 3D All Stars? Mark, any guesses? I just I feel like they didn't feel like they need to have it. Wait, do I mean probably accurate, right? Like it it uh, it was a it is one of the like great another like 10 million plus seller, um, even though it was available for a limited time, uh, with just those three games. So yeah, maybe they made the right choice. Um, but let's get a remake of that, and then that just opens the gates, of course. To Super Mario Galaxy 3. Well, and that would be especially wild because, you know, if they had, like, they did with Metroid, Famicom Detective Club, and Link's Awakening, like, a third party develop it, develop right. that remake, and then have enough confidence in them to make a new Super Mario Galaxy. Right. To have, like, another Mario team going that is pretty wild, wild. right? That would be pretty wild. Um, Yeah, and... It- you know, there, there are a few game series I like as much as the uh, Mario Galaxy games, specifically uh, the way they can like sort of dip their toe in like the aesthetic of open world while still being like wholly course based um, and like messing around with gravity and just like the level of invention in, in all those games uh, is just so cool. I just want another one. My next one is true wish casting yeah 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 and oh but also and also i uh, don't know why but i thought you were gonna say true detective <laughs> uh this one's very i've never played this game before mm. and i think probably the only way i'll ever play it is if some it like miraculously gets a remake or something that's eternal darkness um i don't know very much about this game yes. other than it's vaunted and it's on the gamecube and right. it's some like psychological horror mm-hmm. thing that maybe it changes depending on how you're playing it and like the choices you're making and it like messes with like the display as a way of like psychologically torturing the player uh-huh right and you know maybe uh this would feed some of the children who are not feeling fed by emio the smiling man you know being a famicom detective club game instead of uh more straightforward i guess and ent- like horror entry sure from nintendo I mean, that, that being said emio should make an appearance in the <laughs> eternal darkness remake right well if not in the remake in eternal darkness 2 right which um emio colon <laughs> the smiling man dash eternal darkness that's right but yeah eternal darkness uh, um yeah that's that's pretty good uh made originally by silicon knights yes yes um do they still exist no defunct no. 2014 so uh, that's uh, that's a jump ball at this point, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, that that that'd be fun. Uh, we mentioned this as you know the teaser images for um, Meo were were coming out, but like horror is not really a space that Nintendo occupies very uh, regularly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, maybe they they should. What about uh, something like Geist? Unless this is your third example. No, it's not my third example. <coughs> Guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course. I, you know, Weird Nintendo is our favorite Nintendo. Right. I 100% want them to re- to make do a remake of Guys. Let's teen get a up, remake uh, of Guys. Teen up a sequel. Um, and for those uh, playing along at home, Geist was a, a GameCube game where you uh, played as like a like army marine kind of guy who gets killed in the first map of the game, uh, and then you spend the rest of the game as a spirit possessing other objects to like accomplish his task. You uh, and the the goal is to possess an object that is easy to possess 
and then use it to scare someone while they're scared you can possess them more easily so like you're you you possess a dog dish uh, and then it like rattles around scares the dog now you possess the dog um there's a scene where you possess a shower head to scare a lady who is showering which is a different era for nintendo it, it really was yeah like um uh they were taking swings in the gamecube era we i wonder if We've talked about doing like a GameCube horror thing before. Yeah, I wonder if we should tr- try to track Three down big copies. examples: a- Eternal Darkness, uh-huh. uh, Geist, and uh, Resident Evil Four. I wonder if we should try to track. I I'm guessing copies of Geist are just incredibly they, expensive. They've got to be astronomical, and yeah. uh, probably Eternal Darkness is the same. Right, but that would be it's a an good interesting I- it's a good exercise. idea. It's a good idea. And we then we would it. have to figure out a way to play GameCube games because I don't own any hardware that would do it. Well, we would just have to uh, get a GameCube. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's all there is to it. Uh, I have some GameCube controllers still. So, oh, okay. So we're like halfway there. Yeah. Um, all right. So now my, my final uh, example of, of, of wish casting one of these. Yeah. So I'm starting from a remake that has, that has been published. And uh, this is probably the most me answer that I could possibly give. But Super Mario RPG the remake came out in November last year. Uh, it was a, a, I love the original game. I loved playing the remake, um, but it had the nagging feeling as I was playing it that it was just the game that I had played 25, 30 years ago. Uh, so why not get Arte Piazza out there uh, and stop remaking Mario RPG, but just make Super Mario RPG? Two. It would be an interesting exercise to see how they would differentiate it from the Paper Mario series. Yes. You know, just be like, especially if they could get Square Enix involved again. Totally. And use some of, like, I don't know, it's like Kingdom Hearts, but for Square Enix and Nintendo. Totally. You know, like, take it in, take that idea of taking the spirit of these two companies, maybe even literally the characters of these two companies, and mashing them together right. in a whole new way. Um, And, you know, like, yeah, I, I, just the opportunity to use... uh gino and mallow as like playable characters again uh it didn't the, the cast is so rich right look we got boshi he's a blue yoshi who's evil and wears sunglasses <laughs> it's good it's good it's good what about booster he's like a crazy man in a tower he plays with trains it's good that's good what about smithy a star god who <laughs> takes the form of a sword and plunges into bowser's castle what well, can i say it's good it's good <laughs> Um, yes. So, uh, bring back all of those elements and let's get a sequel to Mario RPG. My final one is dealer's choice. Nintendo, take your pick. I think either of these Mm. would be fun to come back. That's 1080 snowboarding. Yeah. Or wave race. Right. So I think you could, and hey, GameCube games are in vogue, or maybe we just talk about them a lot, but. No, I uh, think they're in vogue. Like, yeah, you get like 1080 avalanche. Yep. Or Wave Race Blue Storm. And um, I think a new... I'm a little biased in that I l- love the soundtrack to Wave Race yeah. um, 64. More than I really like the game itself. Like, uh, you know, sure. I, I played it, but I, when it was released on Nintendo Switch Online. Um, but uh, I, I, I love the soundtrack to that game. That kind of like 90s... Uh, it's you know, so like it's like fusion jazz cool stuff. jazz yeah. yeah um that i think that energy brought to a modern wave race game would be really cool but also it would just be interesting to see nintendo make sports games again like a 1080 game that isn't mario themed it's just like totally a straight up right you know um played for reality as snowboarding game uh what's but, you know, I feel like all of like th- those two games are sort of of a P and I know we've, we've talked before about like, yeah, we should be combining it's excite bike and pilot wings and uh wave race into just like one big extreme sports uh, kind of uh, and 1080, like throw them all in there. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, like why not like pick one of those GameCube games and remake it. There've been, uh, you know, obviously the the remakes of or not remakes, but kind of just ports of like Pikmin one and two. Um, you know, Metroid Prime uh remastered. Um, and now Thousand Year Door. GameCube games have been a thing that they like to either remake or port for uh current hardware. Um, so yeah, why not any of those that that you mentioned? Yeah, and also why not uh, F Zero? Why not F-Zero? There's been rumors for the last year that 
um, and that they were remaking the F Zero GX, the GameCube game, right, to be released when it seemed like Nintendo was maybe going to do that. We had the Metroid Prime Remastered. Yes, we had the Pikmin GameCube games coming to Switch, right? But in a very classic Nintendo fashion, they did it twice, and we're like, we're good. Yeah, we don't need. We're, to do, we're not going to do, do it a do third it time. We don't do threes. The other thing, looking back on this, that I, that is interesting to me is, you know, like. I, I feel like Nintendo, maybe it's, again, that opportunity cost where they just don't have the developers, or maybe they've just narrowed in to say, like, they don't, they don't do games like 1080 anymore. They don't do games like Wave Race anymore. Like, they do yeah, that's true. make new IP, but they're like Splatoon. Like, they feel very Nintendo. Right. In a way that, like, in the GameCube era, or previously, like, a Nintendo game could be anything. It could be a snowboarding game. Right. It could be like a realistic, you know, whatever. Could be Ken Griffey Jr.'s baseball. But they don't do that anymore. Right. Every it's very like what Nintendo has evolved into is very different. Yeah. Yet the same. Well, but you know, sports games are such a big part of their identity, especially in the like arcade era and then like into the early NES, just because like games as a concept were uh tricky enough to sell to people that if you were like, No, no, but this is baseball, you know baseball, right? That you'd be like, Oh yes. And now like what has more cachet to sell a video game, Mario or baseball? Uh, you know, this is back to our, the question I posed on uh, Tuesday. What has a big, bigger cachet to sell video games, Sonic or the Olympics? Right. You know, and it's like probably the video game thing. And probably in the NES era, there was a sense of like, well, if we want a, a baseball game on our system that's good, right? we have to do it. Right. You know, like yes. we're going to put that is not really necessary anymore. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that is... Or just a space that Nintendo's not interested in. Because they probably could make a really yep. great baseball game if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But that it, Nintendo's just evolved away from that. Where's our Sluggers game, huh? Mario Sluggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah even like a... Um, uh, we need to get Matt Acevedo back in here. <laughs> Start pitching Nintendo baseball games. Yep. Um, it's also, uh, you know, we uh, talked about this recently, and then there was some discussion about it in the Discord, um, but you saying that Nintendo does do new IPs um, from time to time, it's been kind of a while, right? Like, the, the last one that we can really, like, if we want to count, like, Game Builder Garage as, like, a separate entity. I would say, like, from Ring Fit Adventure. Ring Fit Adventure is, yeah. But that was four years ago. It was 2019, right? No, I think it, it, it was, was pre the pandemic. It, no, it was pre-pandemic, for sure, because we all ignored it. Oh and my gosh, you're right. The and then happened. No, you're totally yes. right. So yeah, maybe Game Builder Garage is the yes, is like the recent. most recent. But even it is sort of an extension of Labo, right? Um, and the uh, like Labo Garage. Yeah, is that? I that could be. I'm really struggling yeah. to think of anything that else that would like qualify as as new. new IP. And then like before that, it's like Arms. Right. Uh, and then, yes, yeah, Splatoon, like you mentioned, but like now we're back in like the middle of the Wii U era. So, yeah, it's probably been 10 years of Splatoon at right. this point. Uh, Wild thing. So they just got to keep remaking and making <laughs> more sequels to the series that already exist uh, because they're not really making brand new stuff anymore. Um, all right, Mark, let's close this conversation out. This feels like a, a, a place uh, that is, uh, you know, good for conversation, uh, either continuing in the Discord. Would love to hear what other people would be interested in uh, where remakes followed by sequels are concerned. Also, did we miss any big ones? Right. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are. Uh, we tried to kind of keep our uh, focus on, like, more recent games. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, the, Nintendo's got a long history. So, like, what did we miss? Also, are we missing any obvious new, like franchises oh I don't sure think, yeah. i don't think we i are, don't think we are because i it's the last time this came up it, the conversation con continued in the discord which is what made me remember uh game builder garage i think uh, uh i think uh av in the discord pointed that out um uh might have been virtual boy i forget who exactly also thank you again to chariot goblin for yes. writing in for that i th think chariot goblin might have explained their name to us once before I have a vague mm. memory of that being true. Do you want me to search our emails <laughs> real quick? <laughs> we don't need to do it live. Chariot Goblin. 
Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's there's a. I just searched goblin. Um, all right, okay, all right. I'm getting some emails. Well, from if you told us before and we forgot, Marvel I'm about s- the green goblin. I'm sorry, but uh, we still want to know. Yeah, we still want to know. <laughs> But you don't have to. If you don't want to, it's fine. Um, That's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you so much to our 16-bit patrons, Connor McKay, Patrice Millette, Kyle Seaborn. We appreciate you all. We appreciate everyone who's listening to this show. Um, If you're not in the Discord, email us. We will send you an invitation. Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8-Bit Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening.